Welcome to my CBSC English teacher. Today let's look at the line by line explanation of the chapter Discovering Tut the saga continues from class 11 English. If you're watching my video for the first time, please subscribe. You can listen to the explanations of lessons from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let's move on to the video now. Discovering Tut the saga continues was written by Ann Williams. Ann Williams is a former senior writer for National Geographic magazine and online news where she covered the world and all that's in it for almost 3 decades. She specialized in archaeology, writing features that took her from Egypt to Alaska, a monthly piece for an ancient world section of the magazine, and new stories on the latest archaeological discoveries. Before moving on to the lesson let's look at the meanings of the words and phrases used forensic reconstruction it means scientific proofs and data to solve the mystery related to king tut's death scudded across means the dark clouds moved quickly across the sky casket gray means the dark gray color of the evening sky in which the stars were twinkling beautifully resurrection means coming to life after death Funerary treasures means the artifacts such as board games, a bronze razor, linen undergarments, cases of food and wine, lots of gold etc buried in Tut's tomb. Circumvented means dodged the guards and stole the gold artifacts of mummies. Computer tomography means CT scan using x-rays. Eerie details means the CT scan king Tut's strange and mysterious head from all sides. So let's move on to the lesson now discovering tut the saga continues so what is the meaning of discovering tut who is tut tut is a teenager king a egyptian king who died who ruled and died some 3000 years ago okay so discovering tut the saga continues so what is there to discover what is so strange in tut see tut was a teenager king and he died mysteriously so everybody wants to find out the reason how he had died or why he died so there were so many tests and scans and other you know things conducted in order to find out the reason behind tut's death so many archaeologists and researchers and historians they try to find out this so that is why the title discovering tut was meaning of discovering to uncover something that is already there and they want to find out about it so discovering tut the saga continues what's the meaning of saga saga means a long story so the story of tut still continues people are still trying to find out the reason for his death so in this lesson we are going to find out what happened to tut how he died and how what in which ways what are the ways they used to find out about his death So he was a teenager when he died. So King Tut here he represents King Tut. He was just a teenager when he died. The last heir of a powerful family. The last heir. What do you mean by heir? Heir means successor of a powerful family that had ruled Egypt and its empire for centuries. So this King Tut belonged to a royal family of Egypt that had ruled Egypt for many centuries together and he was the last heir. He was laid to rest laden with gold and eventually forgotten. He was laid to rest means that he was buried. So what is that process of uh, burying called in those days? They used to mummify the bodies. That means embalm it, preserve it and keep it fill it with so many things. So here also he was laid to rest that means he was buried laden with gold and eventually forgotten. Laden means filled with so his tomb was filled with gold. and eventually forgotten so after his death what they did they buried him and lot of gold also was put along with his body and then everything was forgotten since the discovery of his tomb in 1922 the modern world has speculated about what happened to him with murder being the most extreme possibility so what happened it was only in 1922 that for the first time that his body or his tomb was discovered okay and after that the whole world has speculated that means lots of theories had been coming about that means people had so many doubts about what happened to him 
with murder being the most extreme possibility so people still believe that maybe he was killed so they were trying to find out what happened to tut so so many stories were going about uh, relating to his death and people mostly thought that somebody might have murdered him now leaving his tomb for the first time in almost 80 years tut has undergone a ct scan that offers new clues about his life and death so for the first time his tomb was taken out that means the body of tut was taken out and then what happened the body underwent a ct scan so imagine ct scan is usually done only for people to diagnose diseases but here the mummies are also go undergoing ct scan and tut's mummy was one of the first mummies to undergo the ct scan and so after the ct scan they got many clues about his life and death and provides a precise data for an accurate forensic reconstruction of the boyish pharaoh so what is the meaning of forensic reconstruction i told you using scientific methods to find out about the uh, clues or whatever relating to the death of a person so here also because by using the ct scan they were able to get precise data that means accurate data regarding the life and death of the boyish pharaoh why boyish because he is just a teenager and pharaoh means a egyptian king so they were able to get certain details after the ct scan an angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as king tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient egyptian cemetery known as the valley of kings so for the first time when his body was taken out of the egyptian cemetery so that's the place where his body is kept okay or where the mummy is preserved so in that place that egyptian cemetery is known as the valley of kings so for the first time when he was when his body was taken out what happened there was a strong wind and the sand was moving around like ghostly dust devils okay it was looking as if the nature or the uh, uh, sand or everything the surrounding was itself angry so that's why he says an angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as king tut was taken from his resting place so it is showing as if the nature is responding so that is why the writer is writing it in such a manner and then what happened dark bellied clouds had scudded across the desert sky dark bellied clouds means dark colored huge clouds bellied means it it means stomach so it looks as if the clouds were full and it is huge okay so dark clouds had scudded across the desert sky that means the clouds were moving quickly over the desert sky and now were wheeling the stars in casket gray casket gray means see the stars were all studded on the gray color clouds and that is why but now they were being covered by this uh, dark clouds that were moving across it was 6 pm on 5 january 2005 so it was on this day that the mummy was taken out for scanning the world's most famous mummy glided head first into a ct scanner bought here to probe the lingering medical mysteries of this little understood young ruler who died more than 3000 Three hundred years ago, so it was in the evening that the scanning was taken place, and the world's most famous mummy. Why was this most famous? Because Tut, he was a young king. He died when he was a teenager, and then there were so many speculations or assumptions or theories regarding his death. So that is why it is known as the world famous mummy. So first, its head went into the CT scanner and followed by the body. So. why why was the ct scan done because to probe the lingering medical mysteries probe means to find out what is lingering medical mysteries lingering means still staying around so so many mysteries are still surrounding the death of king tut so they wanted to find out an answer for this so that's why the body was taken out to scan and this ruler we already know that he had ruled and died some 3300 years ago all afternoon the unusual line of tourists from around the world had descended into the cramped rock cut tomb some 226 feet underground to pay their respects so in the afternoon what was happening many tourists usually tourists come and visit the tombs to find out you know to have a look at these mummies so that day afternoon also many tourists descended 
the descendants went down into the cramped so it was kind of uh, you know it was not a huge space it was cramped rock cut tomb so the tomb was made of rock and where was it located some 26 feet underground so it was below and people were visiting there to have a look at the mummy so they gazed at the murals on the walls of the burial chamber so people who were visiting the tomb they started looking at the murals what are murals murals are nothing but paintings so there were paintings on the walls and they peered at tut's gilded face and they also looked into tut's gilded face gilded means covered with gold it was glittering the most striking feature of his mummy shaped outer coffin so the coffin itself was in the shape of a mummy the shape of his body and the most striking feature is a shining face okay so some visitors read from the guide books in a whisper so people had some guide uh, books or booklets in their hand and some of them were reading in it very slowly others stood silently perhaps pondering tut's untimely death so some people were just standing there and wondering about how tut uh, tut died especially because uh, when he was a teenager or wondering with a shiver if the pharaoh was cursed so some of them were also thinking about the pharaoh was cursed what is this pharaoh was cursed the pharaoh might have cursed whom death or misfortune falling upon those who disturbed him was really true so we saw how the nature was reacting when the body was being taken out how strong winds were blowing the sand flying around and all that so here people were thinking that was all caused because of the pharaoh's curse because the pharaoh might have cursed people who tried to disturb him now somebody is trying to disturb king tut so that's why they are just thinking that it might be because of this that the nature is reacting in such a manner so this is a picture of king tut's tomb you can look at the mummy shaped coffin inside and look at the murals on the wall the paintings that are there the mummy is in a very bad condition because of what carter did in 1920s said sahi havas so sahi havas told that the condition of the mummy is very bad because of somebody called carter he did something in the 1920s so that is why the mummy is in a very bad condition now who is this sahi havas he is the secretary general of egypt's supreme council of antiquities so he is the secretary general of this organization that looks into the antiques and other archaeo archaeological stuff okay so as he leaned over the body for a long look so after he taking a look so this is what he expressed Ca carter or howard carter that is was the british archaeologist who in 1922 discovered tut's tomb after years of futile searching so who is this howard carter he was a british archaeologist and people kept on searching for tut for a long time and but nobody was successful so that is the meaning of futile searching means no use uh, a, a search that was of no use but this british archaeologist he was able to discover tut's tomb in 1922 it con its contents though hastily ransacked in antiquity were surprisingly complete so what happened when he discovered the tomb he found that it was hastily ransacked in antiquity that means uh, during the ancient times many people had tried to search it in a quick manner they wanted to find out what is there but were sur surprisingly complete but though somebody tried to search it and all that but then everything was intact they remain the richest royal collection ever found and have become part of the pharaoh's legend so whatever items that they have found along with the tomb buried along with the tomb it is supposed to be the richest royal collection that means till now they have not found such a huge collection of items other along with other mummies you know for the first time they were able to get the richest collection along with tut's body and that has become part of pharaoh's legend pharaoh's legend means the pharaoh's story stunning artifacts in gold their eternal brilliance meant to guarantee resurrection caused a sensation at the time of discovery so what is stunning artifacts artifacts are man made objects having some historical interest 
so there were so many man made objects and everything were made of gold and their eternal brilliance what is eternal brilliance they were so shining and glittering and it was eternal that means there was no damage or change at all it lasts forever so the brilliance of these artifacts were still remaining and it as if it was so shining as if it meant that the person who died could come back to life so that is why the eternal brilliance meant to guarantee resurrection caused a sensation at the time of discovery so when they found this kind of treasure so many things made of gold it was kind of a sensation so it became the talk of the town and everybody wanted to see this huge collection of materials everything made of gold and still get the most attention and now also people want to know what are the things and how they look that were there along with the body or along with the mummy but tut was also buried with everyday things he'd want in his after life now we know that the mummy is usually preserved and kept but the tut's body also was preserved but along with his body there were so many things not only gold but things that he would need after his death so board games a bronze razor linen undergarments cases of food and wine so not only gold every other thing what a person would need in a daily life so all those things were also buried along with tut so what are the things see board games a bronze razor undergarments even food and wine were buried along with this body in the tomb so in this picture you can see some of the collections of items that were there along with the body so you can see how brilliant they are all looking so shining made of gold and you can see cases of food and wine and many other things that are necessary for his life after his death after months of carefully recording the pharaoh's funerary treasures so it took months for him to record the funerary treasures what is funerary treasures all the treasures all the artifacts that was found along with the tomb so that is called the funerary treasures so it took months for him to write down what were the things found inside the tomb carter began investigating his three nested coffins so after writing down about the items then he started investigating examining about the three nested coffins so there were three coffins that were put together opening the first he found a shroud adorned with garlands of willow and olive leaves wild celery lotus petals and corn flowers the faded evidence of a burial in march or april so when he opened the first coffin what he found there was a shroud what's a shroud a shroud is nothing but a cloth used to cover the dead body so all that cloth had been decorated with olive leaves celery lotus petals and corn flowers etc now all these leaves and flowers are found during the months of march and april so he thought that maybe the burial took place in march or april when he finally reached the mummy though he ran into trouble so after investigating all this finally he reached the body of tut itself but when he came to that point there was some kind of a trouble the ritual resins had hardened cementing tut to the bottom of his gold coffin so what is the meaning of ritual resins resins are usually a part of the rituals when they bury the body they are usually kept on the chest of the body so what happened to tut's body the bottom of his, his body had actually hardened cementing to the bottom of his gold coffin so these resins became hard and then his body was stuck to the bottom of his gold coffin no amount of legitimate force could move them so whatever amount of force was applied that uh, investigator carter was not able to move the body carter wrote later what was to be done then he wrote he was also recording about his investigations he made notes as what he was doing so at one point he also wrote like what could be done because he was not able to move the body the sun can beat down like a hammer this far south in egypt and carter tried to use it to loosen the resins so he saying in that valley of kings in egypt it is so hot there that it can beat you like a hammer so he tried to use the sun so what did he do he tried to keep the body of tut outside in the sun thinking that the sun would try to loosen the resins so that he can board easily move the 
body and investigate. For several hours, he set the mummy outside in blazing sunshine that heated it to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. So what did he do? Carter moved the body outside to the sun and he kept it there in the blazing sunshine. That means it was burning outside and the temperature was about 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Nothing budged. That means nothing moved. The body had really hardened and that much of heat also could not move the body or melt the resins. He reported with scientific detachment that the consolidated material had to be chiseled away from beneath the limbs and trunk before it was possible to raise the king's remain. So he reported with scientific detachment. Why he had this scientific detachment? That means he tried to use so many methods but still he was unable to move the body. He says that the consolidated material, what is this consolidated material? The body that was sticking to the bottom of the tomb had to be chiseled away. What is chiseling away? Had to be cut out using a knife from beneath the limbs and trunk. So he had to use a knife to cut the body of limb, cut the body of tut from below his limbs, hands and legs and the trunk. So only then it was possible for him to move the body and then use it for his investigation. So now we know that this is the kind of damage that Howard Carter had done which was told by Zahi Havas. In his defense, Carter really had little choice. So when people started questioning Carter why he did the damage, so he had no choice but to tell the truth. If he hadn't cut the mummy free, thieves most certainly would have circumvented the guards and ripped it apart to remove the gold. So he is saying that if he hadn't cut the mummy and uh, you know preserved all the treasures there, he is saying thieves who would have come to know about this treasure would have come and circumvented the guards and ripped it apart to remove the gold. That means the thieves would have come and dodged the guards or cheated the guards and they would have torn the mummy apart to take away all the gold. So if he didn't do it, he is saying that somebody else would have done it. So this is what he told in his defense. In Tut's time, the royals were fabulously rich. So that is some 3000 years ago, the Egyptian pharaohs or the Egyptian kings were all fabulously wealthy. That means they were extremely wealthy, rich. And they thought or hoped that they could take their riches with them. And what did those people believe? They believed that when they die, they can take all the gold with them. For his journey to the great beyond, that means for his afterlife, King Tut was lavished with glittering goods. So King Tut, what all were there in his tomb? He had so many glittering goods, that means all shining goods. Or what are the things? They are all precious collars, inlaid necklaces, bracelets, rings, amulets, ceremonial apron, sandals, sheets for his fingers and toes, sheets means covers and the now iconic inner coffin and mask all of pure gold. You, so you can see what are the different kinds of materials that were kept along with Tut's body. So everything for him to use after the, so all this showed his riches. So all these items were made of gold and even the coffin itself was entirely made of gold. So they thought that they could carry all these things along with them even after their death. So I hope you liked today's video. Let's look at the second part of the lesson in my next video. For more informative videos, do subscribe to my CBSE English teacher. Like, share and give your valuable comments below. Thank you for watching.